Hello everyone, it's Nady, and today we're going over this month's best and worst Tabute Tay. As you beautiful people know, this is about the products and not the people behind them. Any tip you may have with them, please cast it away because this is a channel of positive energy. Okay? Thank you. So, how is everyone today? I hope wherever you're at in the world, you are having a fantastic day so far. Also, it has been a hot ass minute since we've done one of these videos, so sorry about that. I don't even know if we've done one this year, I'm sure we have, but it's felt like a long time, so we have a few products to go through. If you've never seen one of these videos, I always categorize them into three different sections. We have the hell knows, the meh, and then the yas category, and the yas category is very big. Bigger is always better, don't let anybody fool you. I I haven't really done many reviews in the last few months, but there have been a few here and there, and then a few products I use on the daily basis on myself that I don't really talk about while filming. So let's go ahead and skip our little titties into this video and start. Shall we start with the yes category? First up, we have this beautiful Viseart palette that my makeup fairy godmother gave me. I love you, Mama D. Thank you. This is the Viseart Editorial Brights palette, and when we say brights, Mama, this shit is bright. These are just so beautiful to work with. They blend out amazingly. You can pack them on and you really don't have to use a whole lot. Like this bitch is pricey as hell, but this is one of those brands where a lot of the shadows actually are worth it. Not all of the palettes are, they do have some misses, but this one is definitely not one of those. This is so beautiful. And being a color hoe, this is my absolute dream. No, a lot of people aren't going to be able to create like full looks using just this. It definitely is a supplemental palette, but oh my god. This just fulfills every dream that I could have. It's like a color orgasm. I just want to eat it and hope that I'll become like a magical unicorn inside. I quite like it. Then we have a palette that I actually just reviewed. This is a blush from Lunar Booty, the Moon Prism Blush Palette. I really enjoyed this palette. It's very difficult for me to find flaws in it, from the packaging, from the quality to the shade range. There's not a whole lot to critique. Like, so many people can use this palette, and I love this peachy coral color. Like, oh, stunning. I just foresee myself using this on a lot of people. Not that I do many people's makeup, but this is something that I feel comfortable putting in a makeup bag if I do need to do somebody's makeup. I feel like it's very versatile and all I would need is like this palette, maybe like a berry palette. So I, for one, am very hopeful that they do come out with a more reddish palette, but this was a great start for launching blushes. At least I think that was the first blush palette, wasn't it? If I had highlighters, lipsticks, glosses, eyeshadows, and now blushes, I think that's all. Next, we have some products from the OG daddy of makeup himself, Wayne Goss. Love Wayne, he is perfect, he is lovely. And I did just review his lipsticks, and unfortunately, I didn't care much for anything except for these. Well, actually, I take that back, that's not fair. They were good products. I just didn't think the quality matched the price. There's nothing wrong with them, but if I'm going to pay that kind of money for a luxury product, I want them to be really pigmented and really long lasting. And those were not them. But to some people, I'm sure they definitely are worth the price. And there's nothing wrong with that. But these bitches, I am totally fine paying, what were they, like $17? Oops, one fell out. Fell out like almost every gay anus had pride. But these little ladies are so beautiful. They are a little bit on the drying side, like a lot of lip pencils. But when you pair them with pretty much any lip gloss or any cream, lipstick, that dryness instantly dissipates and you're left with a very, very comfortable feeling. The only issue that I did find with these is that over time, they do kind of crumble. That happens a lot with lip pencils, but I do also have others that instead of crumbling, they just fade. I personally am willing to overlook the crumbliness because these are a dream to apply. Like, you are able to be so precise with them. They're the perfect combination of creamy and waxy. And I think that Wayne was probably catering more towards the older audience. As somebody who's applied a creamier pencil to more mature lips, it can be very very, very difficult. And so these stay hard while being creamy so that you can really push it in and be precise. The price to me isn't all that bad. Plus they have a really good locking cap. And for the makeup artists out there, I really like that you can sharpen these to help sanitize them. They probably are out of a lot of people's price range, but if you're wanting something from this line, this would probably be my top recommendation. Another product that was on the pricey side, but I do really like is this Dior Forever Skin Correct Concealer. If you've ever seen my videos, you know that I'm a Dior backstage ho like that will forever be my ride or die. That and the Uma Beauty Foundation, like, oh my god. My sphincter clenches just thinking about them in the best way possible. Here is the foundation that I always pair this with. I'm not gonna include this in my faves because I've probably included it 10 other times. But this is the kind of product where you can either go very, very light and have it be super minimal, but just look a little bit healthier. You can use it anywhere on the body, and I mean anywhere. And this product is kind of the same way. Like, you could just use a few drops and get very nice minimal coverage, or you can build it up without it looking cakey 
and have it be full ass coverage. I have tried this with a few other products and it didn't always play well, but together these are magnificent. This is the only foundation that I ever use for photo shoots. It's what I use for my own photo shoots for my campaigns. I just love it. And I'm very happy to start shooting with this little guy as well. I really don't have many complaints about it other than it can be a little bit finicky depending on the foundation that you use it with. And it is on like the middle to high end price wise. But as I'm slowly aging, I'm noticing that I'm very willing to pay a little bit more if it's gonna make my skin look flawless and younger. But if you're curious about this, just go to like Sephora or Ulta. I don't know if they sell this at Ulta, but you can always get a little sample of pretty much anything. If they have the Dior backstage or this in stock, try it. Oh my goodness. If you do try it, let me know what you think of it because maybe it's shit on other people and it's just me. I don't know. But this little bitch definitely loves it. And a product that I'm not quite certain if I've ever talked about because I don't do much with hair on this channel, but I love this product. It is probably one of the only products that I'm consistently buying. I have very, very weird hair. It's extremely thick, very, very curly, very unruly. It takes a lot to be able to get it to look halfway decent. This is the L'Oreal Sleek It Iron Straight Heat Spray. Three days sleep with 450 degree protection. I actually don't straighten my hair. When you do use this and you curl or straighten your hair, it makes your hair so fucking shiny like a L'Oreal commercial. Unreal looking beauty that looks touched up. This is great for that, but I actually use this because I blow out my hair. And so instead of straightening it, I'll just like use a round brush and it looks like this. It's fine. I actually get this more for the heat protection, but it does offer a little bit of shine too, but I love this so much. It's right up my alley because I am a self-proclaimed cheap ass and this is very inexpensive. I think it's like three or four dollars. It lasts you a long ass time and if you're the kind of person that does have like fluffier hair, definitely go in with this, especially if you blow dry it. And if you curl or flat iron your hair and use this, you will be fucking blown away. It's good shit. Then we have a product that I always talk about on this channel. This is the 100% Pure Bamboo Blur Powder and a lot of people are always like, well, what's the brand? It's 100% Pure. That is the brand. People always think I'm saying it's 100% pure bamboo powder, which I think it is. Oh no, I guess it's not. There are a few other little goodies in there, but this is exactly like what the brand says. It's 100% pure natural ingredients. It is so fucking expensive and there's not a lot in here. Like this is my second one in, I don't know, maybe the last eight months. And I rarely use this when I film. It's just for my everyday makeup, which I don't wear every day. So it does not last you a long time. But bitch, I cannot stop coming back. Like I wish I could quit you. Bear back mountain moment. No, that's not what it's called. It's definitely broke back mountain. Whatever. This is definitely my all time favorite powder at the moment. I think it's worth the price. I just I wish it would last longer. But no matter what kind of skin you have, you put this on, your skin will look a million times better. Like you think you have great skin, put this on and you will be amazed. God, and it feels so soft. I like, I don't want to waste that. <laughs> this does a fantastic job at blurring your makeup, blurring your skin. The only issue that I've ever had with this is if you do put it directly over like a wet concealer, it'll change colors and kind of oxidize. A lot of setting powders that I have do that. They either oxidize or create like a white cast. And this one just kind of turns a deeper shade than what you get. You can get translucent, but I got a colored one. And the only other negative is the price. Like it is a hefty price tag, but because it completely transforms the way my skin looks, for me, it's just kind of like an investment. I think it's worth it, but shit, I would love if it were cheaper. Next, we have a product that honestly, I am perfectly fine paying for the price. It is a little bit pricey, but I would pay like three times as much for this. It is so good. This is the It Bye Bye Under Eye Full Coverage Anti-Aging Concealer. Oh my God. Holy fucking grail. This is the only concealer that I will ever use on a day-to-day -day basis. I have never found one as good as this. I love the way it looks. It does not move. It is completely waterproof. And when you pair it with this, you will never look better. Like, trust. I know this is tiny. Like, people put things up their butt that are bigger than this. But this will last you forever. When I say that you need the size of a period, that is how much you need. You just put a little sploosh, rub it in between your fingers, and it will cover everything. It'll cover up last night night's bad hookup. It'll cover tomorrow's one too many shots. And you can bet your ass it will cover as many all-nighters as you need it to. I don't have anything on my face. I probably should have worn this because then you would have seen. But on days when I'm not surrounded by studio lights that fucking blur everything and I'm a normal human outside, this is exactly what I reach for. The only issue that I have with this is you do kind of want to use it maybe underneath your foundation. It's not one of those concealers that you can like blend out with a brush over foundation or even with a sponge. It's very, very thick. It's like hyper pigmented. 
good. So it's probably more for somebody who wants a natural but healthier look. It's not one of those highlighting concealers like Shape Tape. For example, let me take a little bit of eyeliner right here. We'll just go like that and we'll let that shit dry. And here I have way too fucking much. Like this is honestly as much as I'd use for both eyes, a little bit on my forehead, down my nose right there. And then I prime my eyes with it. That is all you need. But here, let me take a little bit of that right there. Hopefully this eyeliner is dry. Otherwise it's just going to melt and I don't think it was all the way dry. My bad. That was a terrible example because it's just like seeping through, but it's really great coverage. Trust me. It's trying to be all fancy and shit. Then another product that I've probably mentioned on here several times before, but this is actually an everyday product for me as well. This is the Laura Geller New York blush. This shit is baked to perfection. It is pretty inexpensive. Like you can always find it on Poshmark or at like Home Goods. And this is my all time favorite blush. I think ever. It has a really beautiful shimmer quality to it. So on days when I don't want to have like a streak of highlighter right there, it just adds a glow to my face without adding too much color. Honest to RuPaul, it is perfect in every fucking way. Let me see if you can see it a little bit better if I swatch it there. Can you kind of see it? Yes, right there. Oh, I love it. And I think I got this from BoxyCharm like years ago and I picked another one up at Marshall's for, I don't know, maybe like five or six dollars. I would bathe in that shit if I could. It is so gorgeous. Oh my God, I'm so thirsty now that it's hot out. I am one dehydrated bitch. Who am I kidding? I'm always a thirsty hoe. This is fun. We're just breezing right through here. We do only have a few more left, I promise. The next product is No More Pores by Dr. Brandt. This stuff is so good. I'm trying to think if there's anybody that I don't recommend this to. Like, even if you have flawless looking skin, this will somehow enhance it still. I don't know how this shit works. It's magic, but it does not matter what size pores you have. They will look magnificent after you apply this. It just fills everything in and gives an amazing blurring effect. Like, if you're a makeup artist, if you're doing weddings or anything with photography or anything close up, this is your shit. Even if you're an average everyday consumer and you want your skin to look a little bit more filtered. Boo boo, I got you. I'm not sure if this is just a sample or if this is actually the size that it comes in. It is hella expensive, but to me, hella worth it. Like I want to squirt out a little to show you, but I also don't want to waste any because look at that. It's minuscule. But this, then this, topped off with this, I'm talking like porcelain mannequin realness. Unbearably disgusting perfection. Offensive perfection. Okay, our second to last YAS product is this Arctic Holiday Stick Highlighter. I know this is a little bit old. I think I got this in my Miami a couple years ago, but I finally popped it open and I love this. Typically, if I am wanting to wear makeup in a day, all I'll wear is a little bit of that concealer, a little bit of brown shadow on the eyes, and this. I just plop it right there, right there, and then as a base for my eyes, I'll pop it on the lids. It's so pretty. You only need a little bit of it to really, really shine. It was so fucking inexpensive, and it lasts all day. Like, it clings to your skin. If you don't want to wear heavy makeup, but you want that glow, like, absolutely go for it. Let's put a little bit on right now. See that? Oh, Oh, yes, honey. Spread a little bit on the eyes and kind of on the brow bone. And there we go. See, like, insta-glow. Oh, my God, I'm dropping shit. I don't really have many complaints about this. I think the only thing is that because it is a cream stick, it is going to take up your foundation. So I don't know that I can really fairly recommend it if you wear foundation. But maybe you could, like, tap it onto your skin or even apply it underneath your foundation. But for somebody like myself who doesn't really wear much makeup on a day-to-day -day basis, it's perfect. It really helps enhance the look of my skin. It just helps shit look dewy and young and fresh. I love it. A few people who should probably rub that on their peenies. And then finally for our yay section, we have the Gerard Cosmetics Clean Canvas Eyeshadow Base. This is amazing. I don't know if I've talked about it on a favorites video, but if I have, it deserves every moment. It's kind of turned into the only eyeshadow base that I'll use. It's totally transformed my reviews. Like, I've gone back to palettes that I thought were absolute shit and tried it with this and holy god, like night and day. There's absolutely power and the products that you use, and this can completely change the game for you. Plus, a little bit goes a very, very long ways. Like, just that that's on the cap, this could probably last me a fucking month. It's really, really good. If you ever have a little bit of extra money and you're in the market for a new eyeshadow base, I recommend it. I think it's the fucking bee's knees. I am an affiliate with them, but I don't think I've ever promoted my code. I probably should, but even if I weren't an affiliate, I would be saying the exact same thing. Now, on to our meh category. There's actually only three products in here, so it'll be short and sweet, like me. 
company. Well, maybe just short. Anyways, this kind of hurts to say because I do quite love this company, but I am finding that sometimes they do have a few misses. And that is the Melt Cosmetics Rust Palette. It's good quality, but the colors are just so meh. Like, nobody needs them. The one color in here that I love is this mustardy shade right here. All the rest of them, they really don't do much for me. I have them a million times in other palettes. The shimmers also were on the meh side quality-wise. I found that their palettes are beautiful to look at, but sometimes the quality doesn't really match the beauty. Like, Pat McGrath and this brand are queens of aesthetics, but unfortunately, this palette for me was just meh. And for the hefty price tag that this was, I want to be blown away and maybe blown. Hell, for what I paid for this bitch, it better take me to the movies and buy me spaghetti, too. It's not the worst palette, but it's certainly not the best. So, too, was the Lady Gaga House Labs Stupid Love Palette. I didn't mind this palette. I think it was a total step up from the first collection. Don't get me wrong, I love me some Lady Gaga, but to me, this palette really wasn't worth $50. Oh my god, I'm spitting everywhere. Spit, don't swallow. Just kidding, both are fun. I think the packaging is an upgrade. I think the quality is an upgrade. We definitely have more colors to choose from, but... I, for one, am very confused because this stupid love thing was kind of like a bright neon pink and bright colors and that isn't reflected in here. Like, we could have had a whole row of neons. Neon green, neon pink, I don't know. But, like, when I see this, I want something really, really bright. Same for this. Like, why do we not have that color in there? I don't know. It's not an awful palette. I was just a little bit confused, but I think the brand is taking a step in the correct direction. I do like how it's kind of harmonious with whatever's happening to Gaga. Like, when her first collection launched, her album was kind of on the more tame side, as was the makeup. And now that she's back to being, like, a wild, crazy Gaga that we love. They're starting to add a little bit more vibrancy and colors and things that might be a little bit more edgy. So I like that, but it's not quite perfect yet. And the shimmers are total shit in there. Like the mattes, they're pretty good, but the shimmers, oh my god, don't even get me started. The shimmers are swine. Hopefully you Gaga fans get that. Is that a piece of fuzz? What the hell? Last in our meh category is the Tarte Hydra Sealer. It's not like this was bad, but it was very, very minimal coverage, and it kind of had a little bit high of a price tag for the coverage. The packaging we've seen before it's nothing new. It's just very inexpensive acrylic. And the quality, like a lot of products that we've talked about, it doesn't match the price tag. It's not a bad product, but it does melt whatever's underneath it. And so it's kind of like an iffy product. It's not in the hell no category because you can make it work and it does look pretty when you are able to make it work, but it's far from perfect. It's just meh. Now onto the worst category. I actually only have one product in here and I returned it so we don't have it. And that is the Huda Butete Lip Balms. Can we talk about some serious bullfuckery when it comes to those. They were beautiful, but oh my god. God, they were hella expensive for a lip balm. I think they were what, like 18 or 19 dollars? Hold on, I have to Google it. Oh, they were 25. I can't believe I paid that much. Well, that's why I returned them. I was a little bit confused because the only other glittery lipsticks that I had seen were from Uma Beauty, but apparently that's been a thing around for ages. So it's not like the brand really copied anybody, but I was miffed at the price. Like, oh my God, for a fucking chapstick. No, that's insulting because chapstick looks better, it lasts longer, and it feels better. I don't know if it was just me, but I I had to have used probably a quarter or a fifth of this thing in one day. My lips just constantly felt dry. Like for a second, they'd feel hydrated and nice. But as a person who does need a lot of lip balm because I have dry lips, that product was so subpar compared to just normal drugstore lip balms. If they were like eight or nine or maybe like $12 even, I would have been a little bit more okay with it. But $25, ho oh, please. Like when it comes to eating a whole cake, it's beautiful to look at, but totally not worth it. At least for me, I'm sure some people out there love it, and that's okay because makeup is very versatile, but I did not really care for them, at least for the price. But there you go, that was quick and easy. Sounds like most of my college hookups. What the fuck am I talking about? Any hookup. Thank you all so much for being here. I'm sending everybody so much love, positivity, and happiness, and good weather. And if you want to support me and my channel a little bit more, please feel free to join us on Patreon. It's patreon.com slash poplux. There you get videos a day early, you get special Patreon-only videos, and lots of little nuggets over there. Plus, it's cheap just like me. But but there you go. Thank you all so much for being here. I love having you. Like always, please be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell down below.
below so that you're notified anytime I upload a new video. Don't forget my newest collection of highlighters, including Black Ice, which does change from black to white, is available at thepoplex.com. Also, my latest album, Kiss of Fame, is available everywhere online that music is sold. Thank you so much to everyone who's supporting them. Comment down below. Let me know what you thought of this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. You can follow me on Snapchat, Instagram, and Twitter at Official Lady, and you can follow me online at thepoplex.com. Thank you so much for watching. I love you all, and I will see you again soon. Bye.